This week, we interview local accountant Tim Siebens about how your taxes change when you have kids. And we discuss disciplining your kids in public. And on Whatcom Dads Recommend, we provide some spring break day trip ideas. Well, guys, I am 37 minutes late to our session today due to a parenting issue. What happened? Well, I'll be vague, but uh, I did not do well tonight. I have one child who I think can get my goat more than anyone in the world. And uh, I know what I'm supposed to do in these situations, and I know what the books say you're supposed to do, and I know what our guests say you're supposed to do, and I still can't do it sometimes. (laughs) So it was definitely a discipline issue, and that child had had a rough day, and I knew that probably bedtime was going to go poorly, and my wife even asked to tap out and take over, and I blew it, and I feel terrible, and I don't know how to fix it. (laughs) So... The moral of the story is parenting's hard. Parenting's hard. And by the way, you know, shout out to all the single parents out there. The fact that, right, we we, we get to have a spouse who says, hey, uh, why don't you tap out? I'll take over. Like, single parents never get to do that, right? No. I mean, You're I think right. about how many times where I would just, Amy would come home from wherever and I would hand Lexi to her and be like, I'm done. I'm good. And I could... Let go. So, single parents out there, this bourbon I'm drinking is for you. Yeah, it's uh, parenting. I mean, it's it's a contact sport. It's a uh, mind game. It's a minefield. It's all those things. I think parenting is a a collection of little battles, and I am. Can I say hell bent? You can say hell bent. I can on the say show. I'm hell bent to win each of those individual battles, and you don't win them all. But boy, doesn't it feel good when you win a battle against a three year old? <laughs> it's like the best feeling in the world. <laughs> and I think the little battles are important. Yeah, because you don't want to save them all up and have one big battle. No, I don't think. No, I think you're right. Was today a little battle or a big battle? It was a big battle. It was one of the bigger ones, and it's just in the moment. I mean, Amanda used the term, you quote, flipped your lid, which I think is like a good (laughs) analogy or picture of what happens sometimes. But like, you guys know me. I don't really get angry. I was just going to say that. I want to see him flip his lid. Yeah, really. I'm having a hard time picturing it. (laughs) And I'm pretty mellow. And I, how is it that one of my children, and maybe we're a lot alike, maybe... They just know the buttons to push, and maybe I just don't react well. But man, it's it's regrettable. I feel bad. I don't know how to fix it. And not only did I make mistakes that affect me, they affect my wife and the rest of the family. And so I usually wouldn't make you wait a half hour, but tonight was a, tonight was a parenting L for me. Well, as someone who has the benefit of hindsight (laughs) i can tell you nathan that very seldom do the kids take these types of things with them for very long totally their memories are short at this age and so i highly doubt you did any permanent damage tonight yeah and let's be clear this child deserved something (laughs) (laughs) well the other thing i wanted to bring up is that in our new year's resolution discussion a few episodes back, I shared that my goal is to participate in a triathlon, one that I've done in the past, and try and improve my time some 14 years later. But the news is that you two agreed to do this with me, and we have started some training. Listeners out there, air quotes on training. Right. Yeah. And so I just wanted to check in with you guys. What do you think so far? Yes, considering backing out. <laughs> B, uh, feeling good about the biking portion of the race. Uh, I still think that the running will be the toughest. Really? 
I just haven't run in two years. Yeah, but you're like you are made to run. Like, I, I know mean, you're tall and you're skinny. So like, let me tell you, your body's made to cut. Here's the wind. here's what I'm most nervous about. I get out of the water. I'm wet. What do I do then with the clothes I'm wearing to get on the bike? You hand them to Annette, who's there to hand you, help you at the handoff. I strip down. Yeah, naked. Sure. Let, Let me get this straight. This athletic feat, which is a beginner athletic feat, you're most worried about the details of clothing. Yes. And not the physical... <laughs> Having a heart attack? Yeah, not the physical requirements <laughs> of doing these three things back to back to back. That's exactly right. You're going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Next time you ride your Peloton, yes, hop in the shower first and then ride it. Okay. Because you're going to end up riding your bike in wet clothes. So you yeah. just wear your wet biking pants yeah. to swim in, and then you jump on the bike. Yeah. Right. Some people will probably throw a shirt on. Well, yeah. You'll dry your feet to put your shoes and socks on. Okay. But your pants are going to be wet. But, All right. But five miles into the 10-mile bike ride, you'll be dry as a bone. But I'm worried about chafing. It's just part of the deal, man. Honestly, that's what I'm worried the most about. <laughs> All right. Well, if that's what you're worried the most about, you're going to be fine. Hence the considering backing out. Yeah. Nah, you'll be good. We'll see. All right. Now there's uh, accountability because all the listeners are going to know if you backed out. I did register. Well, then you're good. So I'm, I'm right. financially committed. Yeah. Chris? I'm all in. Like, I'm the kind of personality that when I commit to something, uh, Amy likes to use the word perseverate. I focus on it. I think about it. And I do it. And I try to do it at my very best. So I did uh, a couple days of training, a couple weekend runs around Lake Padden. And uh, felt fine about my time. I didn't uh, didn't keel over or anything. And so I wanted to get my time around Padden under 20 minutes. And I'm feeling pretty darn good. I'm moving. And I get 200 yards from the, the finish line. And I'm at like 19 minutes. I'm going to finish 19 minutes. And I pull my calf muscle nice (laughs) which is just like a massive reminder of i'm getting old i can't just like run out there out of my car and just run two miles or whatever it is around the lake i just can't do it anymore so actually i haven't done any training for the last what three weeks now because Hmm. um i thought my calf was getting better and then i actually went to go jog after my dogs one day and my calf that i thought was all better I pulled it again. What about you? I got sick a couple of times, and that sort of cut into the training a little bit. And then I am happy to have training buddies. That helps because now there is a little more accountability. And if if we decide to go running on a Saturday and it's pouring rain, I can't just back out on my own because i got to be there for you guys. So that's helpful. So thank you for that. Uh, I'm feeling, I'd give myself about a C plus thus far. I think I I thought I'd be farther along. And when I realized it was three months and a week away this weekend, I was like, oh, yeah, going to have to (laughs) start ramping that up a little bit. So not been on my bike yet this season, not been in the pool. So, yeah, I mean, we'll get there, but there's work to be done. Your life can change in an instant. Car accidents impact all aspects of your life and lead to pain and suffering, medical bills, and time missed from work. Robinson & Cole, attorneys in Bellingham, can help. They have represented thousands of clients since 1979. They also handle other types of injury claims, including workers' compensation. Consultations are always free and are available in Spanish. Robinson & Cole, when you need us, we will be here. All right. Well, this week I am doing our Whatcom Dads interview solo. And this week I have with me Tim Siebens, a partner at Safestrom and Company, a local accounting firm and a local Whatcom Dad. Tim, how are you this evening? I'm doing well, Nathan. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. So tell us a little bit about your family, where you live and how old your kids are. Sure. Um, I have uh, two kids, and then we currently have two foster kids. My my, uh, own kids are 15 and 12, and uh, we live in Linden. I grew up in Linden. My roots are here, growing family with kids that are constantly becoming more and more independent. 
a lifelong Whatcom County resident. That's great. So it is almost April. Let's just jump in here and talk about one of everyone's favorite topics, taxes. What changes for a family when they have kids from a tax perspective? Well, you do get tax credits most of the time, as long as your income is not too high. Those tax credits do not offset the cost of having a kid. Okay, um, good to know. But but yes, yeah, starting this year, there is a, a credit of $3,600 per child. Uh, that's a six and under and 3000 per child for uh, uh, above six. So that is uh, an increased credit from previous years. Dollar for dollar, the, the biggest benefit you get from having a, a child in the home when it comes to the IRS. Are there other sort of ancillary benefits that somebody might incur that might lead to a write-off that involves them being a parent? Yes, if you if both parents are working or one parent is working and the other is going to school, there's opportunities to take credits for dependent care. There's also if your employer offers a uh, flexible spending account, you can uh, reduce your taxable salary uh, in order to pay for uh, that dependent care. And then uh, kind of the all important one is to start when they're little and start thinking about how to use uh, the tax law uh, most advantageously to pay for college. Just on a like broad overview level, we understand you're not giving our listeners tax advice, but just things for them to look into. Uh, how would they, what would they be looking for in, in trying to take advantage of tax savings to save for college? Well, there's two, uh, two main pathways. One is what we call a Section 529 uh, plan, where you put money in, and then as long as you use it for qualified expenses, uh, then uh, that money comes out and the growth in that money is, uh, is tax-free. So uh, theoretically, the earlier you put it in, the higher it will grow and the more uh, that you will get to use uh, uh, without paying taxes. Uh, the other option is uh, there are credits. Uh, there's an American Opportunity Tax Credit, which is uh, beneficial if you don't have uh, savings through uh, our 529 plans. Uh, those do have uh, phase out limits for a single person of $80,000 or more or a married couple of $160,000 more. So if you're in a slightly higher uh, earnings bracket, those, uh, those are no longer useful to you. So that's why we uh, um, start to think about the, the 529 plans from a very early age um, as a way to, uh, to put money away and build up a, a piggy bank for them. So let me ask you sort of a fun question. As a certified public accountant at a dinner party, what are sort of the most common tax questions that other adults will ask you? Uh, there's a large range, but uh, sometimes I'm surprised. And, uh, but uh, most of the time, um, it'll be about, uh, about what they can deduct. If we have parents out there who have been doing their own taxes, what are sort of the red flags or things that might come up in their life where they might say, it's probably time for them to talk to a CPA about them doing taxes for them? Well, I, I would generally encourage uh, anybody to hire a professional for, for anything, whether it's your taxes, whether it's your, your will, your estate planning. Um, uh, but generally speaking, once you get past a W-2 and basic itemized or standard deductions, if you have investment accounts, if you're talking about uh, college planning, uh, I really recommend that someone work with a, a qualified accountant and, and just make sure the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. And if someone were to engage you or another accountant, when is too late to get in touch for this tax season? Well, there probably are not too many accountants that are going to take on new clients and promise to have it finished by April 15 but we will uh, still uh, take on a new client and uh, be happy to give them an extension and uh, finish it up after April for them. 
So am I correct that most accountants work through a very busy season in the months leading up to the tax deadline? Yes. So if uh, most accountants that work with individuals and small businesses work a very busy February through April 15th. So as a dad, how do you balance the work life during those three busy months each year? It's, it's tough. I, I fortunately, it leaves me with a lot of flexibility the rest of the year where it's very easy to leave work early. It's very accepted to leave work early to go to a a game or see the kids. And there are certain things that I just don't miss, whether it's a a sporting event. um, You know, I love my clients, but their tax return is not as important as my kids. Well, I know we're in the midst of that busy time, but before we get you out of here, I want to ask you a little bit about uh, you and your wife acting as foster parents. Um, sure. How long have you been doing that and sort of what led you down that road? Well, we talked about it off and on for a long time. So we uh, uh, got licensed through Skookum House, which is a nonprofit here in Bellingham. Yeah, great nonprofit. I highly recommend. And then um, well, over maybe about a month ago, we uh, uh, welcomed two uh, wonderful uh, girls into our house. So we have uh, the spare bedroom. Our kids are at an age where they're able to help and uh, and participate. And we felt like it'd be a, a great uh, opportunity for all of us. And just uh, as parents, we want, uh, uh, it's not the only reason for doing it, but we want our kids to see that they have it pretty good. So far, given that you're a month in, what's the biggest challenge that you hadn't considered or no one had uh, told you about before becoming a foster parent? I think our kids are that we brought in are a little bit older, so we've been surprised that they don't sleep very well. <laughs> so, uh, so, but other, otherwise, it's just um, you never, you never know anything until it happens. So, the the way the department, uh, the DCYF uh, system works is uh, they, they tell you what you need to know just about two or three minutes after when you probably need to know it. So a little bit of resourcefulness and patience is probably necessary. Yes, yes. Has there been a particular moment of joy or happiness that's happened in the last month that you'd like to share? Uh, they're just sweet kids who have been through a lot and they have... Uh, they have absolutely beautiful smiles and it's, you know, just a, it's a pleasure to sit down and play with them. Uh, it's been quite a while since my kids have wanted me to play Play-Doh or color. So uh, we're, uh, we're having fun with some of those things. That's fantastic. Well, thank you to you and your wife for doing that for our community here. If we have any listeners who need help with their taxes or their business, how can they get in touch with SafeStrom and you and your team? So the best, the easiest way is just to go to our website and we have all of our contact information there. So it is just safestrom.com and there is uh, no E in there. It is S-A-F-S-T-R-O-M.com. That's great, Tim. We'll put a link to that in our show notes as well as a link to Skookum Kids if any of our listeners are interested in finding more about being foster parents. All right. Well, I will let you get back to crunching numbers, Tim. Thank you so much for joining us here on Whatcom Dad's podcast. We really appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Nathan. All right. Quick parenting topic this week, how to discipline your kids in public. We've talked about discipline a lot on this show. And when I was on my recent trip, we had the opportunity to spend some time at a water park. If you ever want to do a sociological study on different parenting styles, grab yourself a cold beverage and park (laughs) yourself down at a water park. Because let me tell you, you're going to see it all. And I saw some great parenting going on. I don't want to say that I'm judgmental. I saw some parenting that seemed to make sense to me. And I saw some parenting going on that I thought was going to be completely 
ineffective. Now, you don't need to give it away because, you know, was this an outdoor water park or an indoor water park? This was an outdoor water park. Water park might be an oversell. It was a series of pools at a resort with a lazy river and a water slide. Gotcha. Okay, so, cool. But there were plenty of people there. Okay. So it got me thinking, gosh, do we discipline differently if something goes wrong in public? And I think my instinct is obviously yes, because I don't want to do this out in the public. But there are some times where you really have to nip it in the bud or put an end to it um, while it's out there. So first question to you guys, can you think back to a time when you had to discipline your child in public and how did it go? Did you make any mistakes? Anything that you, you know, think, ah, I wish I would have done that differently. Wow. I can't, I mean, it, it's been a long time for me. I'm sure that there were many instances and I, I'm sure I didn't handle it very well because that my fuse tended to be short. I don't really remember either. I mean, I, I, I just, I, I think parenting is full of so many moments of trying to hold it together that any one particular experience is hard to, hard to remember. There's one time that will always stick with me is when Lexi lost her mind because I would not let her get a stuffed animal at the very front of Hagen. So it is like, you know, all the check stands are right there and everything else. And she is not coming with me. And it was a full on meltdown, like turning into like, what do they say? Boneless. And, you know, she was just, she was just this rag, like, right. and she's screaming and I'm trying to, you know, reason with her and everything else. Finally, I just picked her up and threw her over my shoulder and carried her out of Hagen. Wow. And at 15, she's pretty heavy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, this wasn't last week. She was, I don't know, whatever. She was three or four years old. And I and I carried her all the way home. We're like a two-minute walk from Hagen, right? And I, I got home and I was sweating and uh, kicked the door to knock it, like knock on it with my foot. And Amy answered the door and she just saw my face and she grabbed Lexi. I was able to hand her off. Mm-hmm. Tag, and I, you're it. Yeah. And uh, and that was it. So that's, a, that's an ongoing memory, but I don't really, I can't think of a time where I've really lost it in public trying to discipline the kids. Yeah, I remember this story Amanda tells, and I don't remember which kid it was, but at a grocery store, and it got so bad that she basically just parked her cart to the side and went home and had to go back and do the grocery shopping. And and I give her a lot of credit for that, because I probably would have been like, no, I can tough it out, and we can get through this, and I don't want to come back later. But under the circumstances, she felt like that was the best decision, and it sounds pretty smart. And, and and I think one thing that everybody should keep in mind, if you're a parent of young kids and your kid is losing it, any other parent in the store is going to look at you and they're not going to think anything of it or they're going to think uh, – they're going to they're gonna feel for you because we've all been there, right? We've like been we've there. all been there with a kid – who's tired, who wants something that you've said no to. And they're just, I was just at the grocery store a couple days ago and I saw a kid sitting in a cart. It was at Costco actually. Is where we, and like, <laughs> kid was losing it. <laughs> and the poor parents, right? Like just. Well, it's embarrassing. And yeah. You, think, you know, you think I you're mean, the only person it's ever happened to. Right. And you're so in the moment, but you're right, Chris, because we've all been there yeah, in one yeah. way, shape or form. Yeah. So yeah. is there something you can say to that person to kind of, let them know that they're part of this fraternity of parents who have all dealt with it when they're feeling so small and so embarrassed in that time? Or can you shoot them a look or a smile or do you say like, hey, I've been there. You're doing a great job. I mean, I don't know. I feel like part of me wants to like say, you got this. Like we've all been there. But then you don't want to intrude on some moment that they're having with their kid. I I, I turn around and walk the other yeah. way. <laughs> what? That's shocking. I'm surprised <laughs> to hear that. I, I'm the opposite, right? Where I'm just like hanging yeah. in their dad. Like I'll, of I'll, I'll think of something fun to say. Just feel yeah. like something you know. comforting, non-judgmental. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, like, and, and certainly oh, to I remember know those I days. Like, yeah. You know, I mean, try to make them feel like, Hey, this isn't bothering me that your kid is crying or screaming or. Yeah. Whatever. But see, I think it's almost, when you say something, it's almost acknowledging it. And I think parents want to be invisible when that's happening. At least I wanted to be invisible. So I would rather no one talk to me <laughs> and I don't want to talk to anybody else. Just pretend it's not happening. Well, it's, it's not going to be something like, you know, hey, having a tough day there, huh, Mark? <laughs> 
Yeah, I think that level of like sarcasm. Would yeah, be, it's like that yeah. might end up getting punched if you say something right. like that, right? right. You know. Yeah. So now we've all been there. It's tough. Like, is there any sort of behavior you've seen in public by parents that made you think, ah, there's probably a better way to do that? I, I don't know if I told a story on the podcast or, or even to you, but I remember being in Fred Meyer one time and there was a woman kind of hairy trying to figure things out and throw stuff in the card and her three kids were just going nuts and they weren't paying attention. And she yelled at him, hey, hurry up. We're already three hours late. <laughs> And I'm thinking, where are they going? That's three hours behind. And why would you be yelling at your kids to hurry up when you're already three hours late? <laughs> if I was three hours late with three kids, I, I would have given up by then. Just go home. Yeah, I'd just be like, forget it. Sorry, yeah. I couldn't make it. As the one here who has three kids, three hours late is probably pretty normal <laughs> when they're little. <laughs> well, it, there's that hypocritical parent who's like, get off your phone. And then they're on their phone. Oh, yeah, or the yeah. one who's like, stop yelling! And then they're, they're yelling, yelling at their kids. So That's... that stuff sort of, rink, I don't know, makes me cringe a little bit when I see that. Yeah, I, I, sometimes I see the, well, I'll buy you this thing, you know, if you be quiet sort of thing, you know, like <laughs> bribery, I guess, would be another way to put it. And I, again, I'm not going to pick apart other people's parenting styles, but I often wonder to myself if that's not. That's not solving the problem. That's no, just putting I, it off for later. I think we should tell people who are listening, don't bribe your kids to get them to stop doing what they're doing unless it is an absolute once-in-a-lifetime last-ditch effort. Because you do it over and over again, it, it doesn't work. They're playing you. As, I've seen too many of my friends. Yeah, as Annette says, don't negotiate with terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, on the positive side then, any tips? And we'll put some uh, links in the show notes for some articles that address this. But any tips on like a good level-headed way to handle this? I think – I mean, and this is something I've seen work – is in a public place, if you get down to your kid's level – Yes. And look them in the eye and get their attention and say to them, you need to stop doing this or whatever. Yeah. Instead of yelling at them from above or that eye to eye contact seems to work. And if you can just remove them a little bit from the situation, I know sometimes we'll be at somebody else's house, which is right. still a public place. But if I can just pull them into another room and mm -hmm. just have a calm conversation, I think the simple act of removing them from the situation does a lot for kind of calming yeah. them down. Yeah. I think, and, and this is hard to do all the time, but a little bit of planning beforehand. So think of the grocery store, for instance, engaging your kids and having them be a part of the process, whatever mm -hmm. that might be, or communicating a little clearly in advance so they know it's coming so they can expect that mm -hmm. goes a long ways. I feel like when my kids would melt down in various places, including the grocery store, it was because we needed to zip in, zip out, and it, it was something that they couldn't necessarily participate sure. in. Yeah, that's a great point. Predictability is huge for young yeah. kids. Yeah. yeah. And, and especially saying like, we're going to leave in five minutes, giving them a little reminder. Yeah. And so they're not just continuously being yanked around doing other things. Yep. Um, I asked my wife and she said she likes to sometimes parent as if there's a documentary crew following her around. And so she's always <laughs> thinking about like, I want to be able to do this in a way that if somebody was going to watch this back later, like they wouldn't cringe at what I'm doing right now. That's good. And also you can, I always want to discipline in the moment, but I forget that sometimes you can say, this is unacceptable, but we're going to talk about the consequence later because you don't have to just come up with it on the fly right. in the middle of the busy supermarket. Um, you're going to do a bad job coming up with something anyway. And then if we do come up with consequences, we want to remember they've got to be reasonable. Yep. They've got to be related and they've got to be respectful. That was uh, advice we got from Anne-Marie Reed way back in the early days of this podcast. Great advice from Anne-Marie Reed. She's one of the best. So there you go. A quick uh, primer on disciplining your kids in public. Again, we are not experts, but we do have a little bit of experience. That's right. So I wanted to bring back our Whatcom Dads Recommend segment. And for some listeners who are local and may not be taking a flight or traveling long distances, I wanted to give a couple of day trip ideas that folks could maybe do over spring break. Trip they could get to and back in a day. Well, in celebration of our friends up north removing the testing requirement on April 1st, 
Uh, one of our favorite places to go for day trips is, of course, up to Canada, whether it be White Rock. Uh, we also love the little town of Steveston, which is you just you go through the George Massey Tunnel, take the first exit, and then head left, go hmm. west, and you go to the very end, and there's this cool little town with fish and chips restaurants and a neat uh, little beachfront. It's, it's it's a good little little town. So that'd be my first recommendation. Well, I had down Vancouver, so I would keep going after you get out of the tunnel. <laughs> and I wrote down things like the Vancouver Aquarium, yeah. which I recently took my kids to, um, and also Capilano Suspension Bridge. I haven't been there in more than a decade. I've never been there. Have you been never there? Never been there. Pretty impressive. I mean, if you're not good with heights and shaky bridges, maybe stay away. But I haven't taken our kids there yet, but I remember college times and post-college going out there. And they've got sort of interactive things and some trails you can walk around. So I would also recommend that in the general Vancouver area. Cool. Well, along the same lines of um, bridges, I was thinking a trip to Deception Pass. Head oh, to nice. Whidbey Island. Yeah. Kind of do that down there. You can go to Fort Casey, you can jump on a ferry if you wanted to, and head out. That's a maybe a long day, but relatively good close. Day. Yeah. Good day. And if the weather's decent, you could even get out of the car and, <sighs> and kind of taking the around. kids on the ferry, man, like to this day still, huge smiles on their face. Always want to go check out the vending machines. Always want to go out under the deck. Yeah, if it's a nice day, you don't even need to get off at the other side. No, nah, just turn around. You yeah. can basically pay for a walk-on fee mm-hmm. and leave your car at the ferry terminal. And Yeah, that's for young kids, I think they'll just get a kick out of the boat ride itself. Yeah, yeah. Well, my second uh, choice, and this is a long trip, but we have done it, and that's over to Winthrop and back. And I know that's a trek, but Winthrop is... It's the sunny side of the mountains, you know. It's uh, different. They got a fun little ice cream shop there that is always busy in the in the spring and summer, and they've got a little miniature golf there. So it's a it's just a neat little spot. And for the parents, uh, actually, they have a great brewery there. The old schoolhouse brewery is really good with uh, really good food too. So a good spot for for lunch. I have never been to Winthrop. Oh, you should do it. Do it for spring break. Maybe <laughs> it's good. Maybe I can go over there and train for the triathlon. Oh, there you go. There you go. My second one was pretty close to Deception Pass. It was Anacortes. Mm-hmm. Um, recently, within the last, I don't know, six months, we drove up to the top of Mount Erie for the first time. Oh, yeah. Spectacular view. I mean, they use that view in commercials. You look out over the San Juan Islands, and there's some trails up there to walk around and explore that. Um, and just like you know, going from Whidbey Island, you can catch a ferry easily from Anacortes. Yeah. Um, but if you're in Anacortes, two places to eat I'm going to recommend. We found, on a rainy, windy day, Dockside Dogs, a hot dog stand nice. down by the water there. It even has a little shelter area that can seat four to six people if it's windy or rainy outside. But I recommend Dockside Dogs. And then, I think my favorite donut place north of Seattle is the Donut House in Anacortes. I got to hit it. Right there on the main it. drag. Nice. So, uh, maybe Anacortes. Well, super close to our home, I would say another idea would be Lummy Island. Yeah. Super easy to get to. You can, it's an easy drive. There's places to stop where the kids can get out and run around. There's hiking if you want to do that. Yeah. Um, that little restaurant that's... The Beach Store Cafe is opening back up. Reopening, and yeah. I guess uh, pizza is kind of on their specialty on the menu. Yeah. So, that's super close, super easy. Super short ferry ride, but, you know, it's on the water. Yeah. And again, if it's a nice day, it's beautiful over there. Get on that back side, on the west side. It's beautiful. Pretty darn nice. We've parked on the mainland side and brought our bikes on. And even though, like, there's not much of a shoulder there, but everybody on that island drives really slow. They're really good about bikers over there. Yeah. And so Mm -hmm. it's really, it's not a huge loop by any means. And so you can actually kind of do a little little bike loop as well Mm -hmm. over there. Well, there you go. There's six ideas. Maybe you take a day or two off during spring break, but you will be busy. And uh, hopefully we provided some ideas of a quick day trip. You can do spring break or beyond. Yeah. Thanks again to our guest, Tim Siebens, and thanks, as always, to our sponsor, Robinson & Cole Attorneys. As always, you can reach the show at our email address, whatcomedadspodcast at gmail.com or through our Facebook page. We'll see you next month.
So, guys, I can't take my dog to the pond anymore because the ducks keep attacking him. That's what I get for buying a purebred. <laughs> purebred. Two robbers were robbing a liquor store when one robber grabs a bottle and asks the other robber, Hey, is this whiskey? The other says, Yeah, but not as whiskey as robbing a bank. <laughs> What do you call a zombie songwriter? I don't know. A D composer. <laughs> did Ellen tell you that one? She did not. <laughs> <laughs>